Hey guys, what's up? So we're gonna hop into the vlog, but first I wanted to say thank you so much for your prayers and your concern as um, Hurricane Ian headed our direction here in South Carolina. Uh, we were extremely fortunate because as the hurricane hit landfall, it veered away from our farm. So we really just got a good soaking rain yesterday. Um, some branches down a little few of the plants are probably a little battered but really no damage at all so uh, we are continuing to pray for those of you who were in the path of Ian and also Fiona and it hit um, up north just wanted to update y'all before we hop into the vlog because I've had a lot of people reaching out today checking on us and made me feel really loved so thanks for that you can see here inside the Polaris how uh, heavy and sideways the rain was yesterday. It came in here pretty good. And that's kind of the extent of anything we had to deal with was just a little bit of a mess. Um, however, because we did get so much rain yesterday, there were a few times that it got really heavy and then it did get fairly windy, but we spent pretty much the entirety of the storm right on the outer edges of the uh, rotation. So, I'm sure, I mean, from what I've seen, it, it was pretty rough for the people who were closer to the middle. And it had been forecasted to come right over our house and then turned. Uh, but our, our, we did get very, a very deep soaking yesterday. So I'm actually gonna take advantage of the fact that all of my soil out here is really saturated. Uh, we are gonna be having a pretty moderate week. Um, and it's not going to be it's not going to get super hot again i don't think it will get super hot again for the season but the soil is currently just right for planting seeds i have some plants um i went i was out in town today and i stopped by that same farm stand that i bought plants at the other day and grabbed a few more since we finished these other beds but i'm also going to throw some seeds in the ground and i'm going to try to fill up i won't get to it all tonight but i'm going to try to fill up uh, all of these raised garden beds. Maya did gather the materials to go ahead and build more of the raised garden beds on the other side. I don't know if we'll get those planted, but I have a little more planting space than I had accounted for when we started seeds. Some of our seeds got eaten by bugs. So anyway, just starting these plants and I'm gonna direct sow some stuff. All right, I actually came down here to the high tunnel real quick. I have a couple plants, like this little rose plant, a couple things that really just need to be put in some soil that I'm gonna take down there and they're gonna go in those raised beds or around them. Wasn't really my intention for those plants, but you know. I also have some rhubarb, which <clears throat> we had planted quite a bit of rhubarb in these be this bed and only one of them is actually still alive. I really waited too long to uh, put it in and it was really too hot. But really, rhubarb doesn't need to be in a high tunnel. The only reason we put it in here is because we just didn't have anywhere else prepared to put it. I should have just left it in pots. I was worried if I left it in pots, it wasn't gonna survive the summer. But here I have quite a few pots that though the top spot died back, it's starting to come up. And I'm gonna put some of these pots in one of the little four by four raised beds that I've got and just make like a, a rhubarb bed. I've been told that Rhubarb doesn't do great here because it's hot, but Maya's Nana is from Newfoundland originally, and she has fond memories of childhood of eating rhubarb, which grows well in Newfoundland. Newfoundland is very different than South Carolina, but I really wanna grow some rhubarb for Nana. So that's why I planted all of that in there and I only have one plant. Um, I'd, I'd like to get it going in the garden beds and. Maybe um, in the future, I can have a better shaded area that I can move it to. I think it, it would do best with some shade. That's why I was hoping the high tunnel would help, but I think that it may hinder it in the winter to be in the high tunnel because it actually does well with the cold. Uh, we'll open the walls of the high tunnel back up probably in the morning. Today was still very drizzly and overcast and cool, so it wasn't a problem for them to be closed in South Carolina. It is too warm over the winter to keep the high tunnel closed all the time. Maybe not this one where the citrus is, but when I plant brassicas in one, it would be a detriment to keep them that warm over winter. It, I mean, especially if it's sunny. Right now I still have the shade cloth on these, these tunnels and I won't take that off just yet either. Because even though 
Um, the nights are getting chilly. We're nowhere near freezing. Though these days have been coolish, uh, we'll still have warm days. Oh, look. Hold on. Show y'all this because I just think it's cool. A tiny frog friend. Hi, little frog. Isn't he cute? All right, so let me tell you guys what I'm thinking here uh, with my garden beds that we have. Uh, we don't have the caps on top of these. Basically, we are going to put a coating on the cedar here just to make it last a little bit longer. And yes, we have saved this bed to do a tutorial. The weather just has not been cooperating with us the last handful of days. We will get that up for you guys. Uh, we haven't capped all of these beds and I decided I'm gonna go ahead and plant in them um, and just m make my child Jackson. Who will be the one who does the, the coating of all of these? I'll just let him know to be very careful to not lay anything on that, to not, you know, obviously we don't want him dropping that stuff in the soil. Any I was trying to wait for that to be done to plant anything in these, but I think with our forecast and rain, I don't wanna wait that long to plant stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and plant it, work around that, and it won't be that big a deal. Over here, with you guys the other day, I planted all of these brassicas. They got a little bit laid down and kind of roughed up yesterday with a storm, but they're okay. They're not broken or damaged. And then these were the ones I got all those packs for really cheap, and that's actually what I went back looking for today. Uh, most of these I think are gonna pull through. There are a couple that I would be surprised if they live, but mostly I think they look really good. So I still have quite a bit of planting space in here and the thing i'm considering which is a really important thing to consider whenever you're doing a fall garden is what this is gonna look like in the spring so where i am in south carolina we have pretty mild winters basically i'm in i'm in zone eight and if you want to know what your zone is a lot of people will ask a lot of questions about like what zone do, are you in like, can I listen to your gardening advice? What is it? You can listen to gardening advice from people who garden anywhere. However, your zone denotes what's going to live through your winter. Um, zones don't have anything to do with the length of your growing season. Uh, they don't have anything to do with the, how hot it gets, how many frost-free days you have, any of that stuff. What a zone is, is it, it tells the average low temperature in a region, uh, which why that matters is if you're trying to figure out if something is going to live over your winter you need to know what kind of cold it can withstand so for a lot of a lot of things they'll say oh this is perennial up to zone seven or up to zone five or whatever which that basically means is this can withstand the cold up to this point and it goes in increments of 10 degrees so in arkansas i was in zone seven which meant that the average low temperature was um zero to 10 degrees fahrenheit that's like the coldest it gets now there was one winter in arkansas where it was negative five so obviously it can get colder than that but that's the extreme here the average low temperature is 10 to 20 degrees fahrenheit uh, last year my first year in south carolina the coldest it got was 24 so it didn't even get down to those um, so obviously i know it could probably get colder than that but that's my average so with growing through the winter i know that i can grow anything in this garden that i can keep alive down to 10 to 20 degrees fahrenheit and in the case of most brassicas and most root vegetables if they're acclimated now if i were to plant them all and it was really warm and then all of a sudden we got like a super hard whammy freeze it could probably kill them because they're not acclimated but the way that this fall is already going how it's gradually getting cooler um i feel pretty good about these plants getting acclimated if they're acclimated and if i'm willing to give them a little cover so if i know it's going to get particularly cold one night and i come close up my high tunnels or i throw a piece of frost fabric over those plants i feel pretty confident that i can get those through maybe they'll get a little bit of frost damage but that doesn't mean they won't produce food so right now i'm putting lots of things in these beds because I feel pretty confident that I'll get a lot of harvest out of it. It is a little late to be planting from seed on certain things that may be like heading, uh, like cabbages or Brussels sprouts. Um, they might still do well, but more likely they would grow really, really slow over the winter and I would harvest them in the spring. 
they would really start growing in the spring when the days started to get a little longer. Uh, so I'm planting those things from started plants. And then I might plant from seed things like kale and chard and root vegetables. Uh, the roots, I don't mind if they grow slow. They're typically quicker producing things. And the leafy things, I can just harvest them small if they don't get very big, so that's fine. Whereas a cabbage, you have to, it has to get to a certain point of maturity before it even starts heading, which the head of cabbage is what you're growing it for. Now, the thing that I really have to keep into consideration with planting right now is that if I put onions and garlic in, leeks, shallots, um, even some of those things that might grow really slow and then me harvest them in the spring, uh, if I put those in right now and then I'm ready to plant out things in March or April, the, the things from the winter and fall may still be there. And so one of the things that I was kind of considering out here is where I'm gonna wanna put my uh, arches, my cattle panel arches. I'm not gonna hang any of those up right now because there's nothing that I would grow on those over winter. So there's just not a point of putting them up. But like here I can see, I probably am gonna put a couple of arches right here. So with that being the plan, I might plant onions or garlic down one side of these beds, but I'm going to leave this open so that when I put those arches up in the spring, maybe I could plant some sweet peas or something on those in February. Uh, over here, you can see I'm not going to have arches running this way, um, but I probably will put them here in the middle. Now I've already started planting these beds, but I'm considering that where I'm putting things. And then I have these four little square beds and like that's where I was talking about putting rhubarb in. Maybe some roses. I am gonna intersperse here some perennial herbs all throughout this garden. Uh, some ornamental things that are perennial that I'll leave. Because while I put the chickens in down there, that's a purely annual garden. And this one, I'm not gonna treat purely annual. I'm going to try to have things growing in it throughout the years and just uh, inter interplanting with all of that sort of stuff. So I actually was not planning on making a video at all today. I wasn't planning on doing any gardening. I was in town. Um, I ended up getting home earlier than I had anticipated because I found everything I needed at one store, which is great when that happens. And I decided to come out here and garden. I don't have a lot of light, so I am going to time lapse this stuff and be done talking in this moment because I have said enough and now it's time to plant. All right, let's take a little planting break to explain what I've done. Here's Sir Benjamin, hey Ben. Um, covering these up. You wanna take the shovel and cover that, that line gently? Go for it, right down the middle. All right, so these are Brussels sprouts, started plants I purchased. And something that I do sometimes is I have, I have this uh, package of radishes here. Uh, this is a 25 day variety, which when a package says 25 day variety, it's, it's typically assuming that you are giving ideal conditions to those seeds. So that's probably a 25 day variety four weeks before the first frost, which is the best time to grow a radish. So you've got kind of the lengthening days of spring, uh, probably nice warm days, lots of sunshine, probably warmer evenings, maybe still a little cool. Uh, now we are going into shortening days uh, with less light and cooler nights. So I would be surprised if we harvest those in 25 days, might take a little bit longer, that's fine. Uh, a lot of times what, we actually don't have to water them because yesterday we got so much rain. So the soil is nice and damp. So we don't have to water tonight. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So here I've got these Brussels sprouts which will take quite a while to get larger. So I throw one row of radishes down the middle because by the time these are getting big enough to hinder those, these will be ready to harvest. And that's just kind of, I, I don't usually give radishes their own dedicated space. I always pretty much fit them in places like this uh, because they just grow so fast. Now down here, 
Um, I went ahead and filled out these two beds. I bought some pansies and violas today. Uh, these can live through a frost and it's just to add a little bit of prettiness and color here in the garden. Um, they're cheap annuals so it's just for the sake of joy. Uh, a few cabbages here. I threw some sweet alyssum seeds out right here. Alyssum is a brassica and though it might not flower a lot when it's freezing outside it will continue to grow. You can eat it. I don't uh, usually because it's really pungent but by letting it grow here um, it'll be established and it'll flower early in the spring so that's why I put that here and then this whole section right here is um, turnips on this side and then red Russian kale on that side so this this bed is fully planted and here over here this whole section which is just seeds uh, these are all leeks um, planted from seed in the bed. That's something I've never done before. I've usually used started leeks. So that's kind of an experiment. And then another type of kale and a couple of pansies down here in the end just to fill in some color. I think I'm gonna call that a day on planting. Um, I feel pretty good about that. And I might come out here early in the morning and try to plant some more. But thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And again, thank you for your uh, encouraging words as we weathered out the storm. I bless you, until next time.